Hey guys, what's going on? Glove Save Gaming back here with another video. In today's video, we're going to look at the NHL rosters uh, that were released for my newest roster update, Glove Save Gaming U4 uh, on the PlayStation 4. Um, my, I'm not going to go through every single player that I edited. Um, if you want to see uh, what NHL players either went up and down in rating or had a change in potential uh, You can go on Twitter at glove safe gaming um, It's the uh, tweet that's pinned on my uh, Twitter page uh, so you can see what players went up and down I will go through like a few of them, but I'm just gonna essentially just scroll through each player so you guys can take a look um, At their overall like their x-factors and stuff like that uh, but like a guy like I know Mason McTavish went up by like three I believe he was the most uh, with Tim Stussel as well who went up to an 88 overall uh, So a couple guys went up by a lot uh, Some guys went down by a couple probably no more than like two or three if anything Some AHL guys maybe have went up more but uh, I'm gonna do AHL in another uh, video Jamie Drysdale like he's a guy I just like don't think he's like established himself yet and since he's like injured for the rest of the season, I think. Uh, he's just going to stay, like, at a 79. But I think he's still got medium elite potential. He's got really good potential to be, like, a top pairing, uh, potentially elite defenseman. Then uh, that's where I'm going to leave him at for potential-wise. Some teams, I did leave three goalies that have played a lot with three goalies this year. Um, so now we're on to the Arizona Coyotes now. Something like Jacob Chikrin. He's got good potential. I did my first sim with the Coyotes. Uh, I traded him at the deadline to uh, L.A., and I got, like, a lot back, like, a first, a second, a prospect. Uh, like, Bjorn fought an NHL player. So, um, at 88 medium elite, I thought was really good for someone like Jacob Chikrin. He's a really good, like, two-way defenseman. He's really good offensively, and he's really good defensively. A lot of people don't realize as well. Um, so, I thought an 88 was really deserving for him. A lot of people are pretty hard on him. And as you see for overalls here, it, it doesn't really matter if they're um, over 26 years old. It's not going to make an impact. Even at 26 in franchise mode, it changes. Like if a guy goes in with like a medium top nine, it might ch like auto change to medium top six. So like I'm not even really concerned sometimes with the guys that are 26. I do adjust it for older guys just to like do it. But I mean... Um, it, it's not really that big of a deal to me to be, to be quite honest even like DeBrusque like it's like even if I put him at a high top six like I don't know how much of a, of a difference it's going to be at 25 um Pasternak I think is deserving of the medium franchise I actually meant to make McAvoy a high elite because I think franchise might be a little bit much for him but we will see I think Hampus Lindholm is definitely deserving of that 88 he's went up I think he made an 85 or 86 to start the season so um he's he was really good without McAvoy that first little bit this year obviously goalie line us all marked there too probably the front runner for the Vezina at this point um I wish it was Sorokin because I put a little bit of money on him but I think uh Allmark may have passed him a little while ago now at this point so um Boston's been buzzing too but not along with just playing behind a good D like he's been really awesome as well which is good to see because when he was playing for this team right here that we're scrolling through, like he went through some tough times for sure, but he always played really well. Tage Thompson there to 91 overall. That was like, he's probably the guy with the biggest jump so far this year. I think I had him at an 86 just because like he had a really good season last year, but I'm just like, I'm not going to commit to making him a really high overall after one season. So, um, but I mean, he's been one of the best players in the NHL this season. So, it's hard to not uh, give him, like, a really big jump because, like, he's definitely a top 10 center in the league now. So I think, like, a 91 around that range is definitely deserving for him. Calgary here, a really good team. Like, surprised they haven't been able to put it together. Like, I don't know. I, I personally think, like, I don't know if they're just not buying into Sutter right now. Like, there's six defensemen in 82. Um... Uh, I'm not really sure what's going on with them. I know Markstrom hasn't been playing up to his level, but they're a good team. I think they should turn it around. Pierre Kachekov obviously having a really good rookie season. Freddie Anderson hurt again. Kachekov might get called up. 
Anderson's a really good goalie, but man, he has had some really significant health problems that have held him out for long periods of time, like that have just kind of held him back from being an elite goalie at points in his career. Carolina, obviously a really good team, though, uh, leading the Metropolitan Division. Could have a really good shot at a cup, and now this guy, Pacioretty, I don't want to, like, lower his overall much because, I mean, he's going to come back next year. So, I mean, his contract's lowered, though, to, like, factor in LTIR purposes. So they're going to have more cap space to bring someone in, which, I mean, I'd like for them to see. I think they're, I honestly think they're a real underdog for Horvat. Because, I mean, to add Horvat to these centers would be really good. Because if you push these guys down the lineup, maybe move Kakaniemi over to the wing so Stepan can play that 4C because he's been pretty good this year. They're looking pretty good if you add a really good second-line center. Maybe they're looking at Ryan O'Reilly too, but, I mean, I think Horvat would definitely help to bring another, like, natural goal scorer into uh, Carolina. Chicago, not a very good team. Got some lower-ranked guys. Kane's down to an 88. A little bit of a down year for him, of course. He's not playing with really good players, though, either. Seth Jones, all-star. He's up to an 85. I think a couple of these guys might get traded. Connor Murphy, Jake McCabe. Wondering what Chicago wants to do. Because um, they got a lot of cap room, and if they move both those guys out, it's like $9 million. Are they going to be under the minimum cap at that point? I don't know. Not very strong goaltending. Stalock has been good this year, though. Made him better than Mrazek. Soderbaum's probably a guy that's getting a chance next year. He's a restricted free agent. On to the defending Stanley Cup champion, Colorado Avalanche. Got Kale McCarr, the best-ranked defenseman in the game. Uh, medium franchise potential. Devon Taves, I mean, have him at 91. And a medium top four potential, but like I said, the age, it doesn't really matter at this point. A really solid decor. Sam Girard taking some steps back, though, which is surprising considering the team's been really good. Lowered his potential a bit, medium top four D. They just acquired uh, Matt Nieto in a trade. He won't be in the latest roster update. I just did it right now before uh, moving... Or sorry, before starting this video, because I just wanted to move him over because it's where he is now realistically. So this update came out right before the Matt Nieto trade with like Ryan Merkley and uh, Jacob McDonald. So you're going to have to move him over yourself if you want that real up-to-date roster. But besides that, all transactions before that are in this roster update. Nathan McKinnon there, same overall as Kale McCarr. He's having a beast of a year, even though he's been out for a little bit. I think Colorado, too, is another team that is probably going hard for, like, Bo Horvat or Ryan O'Reilly because they could use that 2C after losing Nazem Kadri this offseason. Didn't really replace that. Evan Rodriguez is a really good player, though. But he would, man, he would be a great third liner in a cup run, I think. Should probably maybe separate line A and Goudreau from left wing to right wing. Because Vorchuk isn't really playing. Uh, I'm meaning to move his salary down to 750 just because we don't know when he's playing again. He's been out with that concussion since they went over to Finland, I believe. So, he hasn't been playing much. I want to keep him at 84 overall, though, because he could come back. You don't really know. Um... But I should separate Line A and Goudreau. I think it would make more sense. Move Line A over to the right wing, maybe. Zach Wierenski out the season. Really sucks for Columbus. They're in the sweepstakes for Bedard. I honestly wouldn't really mind if they'd get him. I think they're a team that he could help them a lot. He'd grow their market for sure. They haven't had a first-line center in, what, how long? Since, what, maybe they got Matt Duchesne like, for that playoff run, but that's all they really had him for, so I wouldn't really mind if Bedard went there, and uh, they're close to being the worst team in the league at this point. I think Chicago's back there now, but um, Bedard would be good there. He'd help their team for sure. Move Boone and Jenner down the lineup instead of having him as your 1C. On to the Dallas Stars. I think this team's definitely 
a cup contender this year. They got a, maybe a little bit of cap room to make some moves. Resigned Joe Pavelski re- recently, which was uh, definitely a good deal for them. He's still a great player at his age. One year deal. I think it's three and a half million with potential two million signing bonus or a bonus. So, not really too sure what those bonuses are, but. I mean, if they go to a cup or something next year, he's definitely going to be hitting some sort of jackpot and getting some extra money out of this. I think they could probably use another center in a trade. I don't know about a top six guy, maybe like a third liner type guy. On to the Detroit Red Wings. I think this team started off pretty hot, but... They faded out for the most part. They're probably looking at a pick between 10 to 15, which is never good, but they've taken a little bit of strides this season. They've obviously gotten better, but uh, some guys just haven't met expectations. Like you look at a guy like Philip Zadina, like how good you thought he was supposed to be. Sider's taking a step back. Ben Sherratt's not what they thought they'd be when they signed him to this big contract. And, I mean, Nadelkovic they've had to send down to the minors. Huso's been a pretty solid goalie for them. But they've had to use, like, Magnus Helberg, this guy right here, who I don't really think is that great of a goalie. But Nadelkovic just hasn't hit met expectations. He cleared waivers. So Detroit's, I don't know if you'd say they're underachieving. Maybe this is what they planned for. But hasn't been too good in Detroit lately. Edmonton Oilers been rumored that they're going to be getting a defenseman in a trade. Wonder what kind of move they're going to pull off, like Joel Edmondson, Chikorin. They've got some a couple prospects they could probably part ways with, but um, the Oilers got to do something defensively. I don't think they're a good enough team to go into playoffs right now and make a huge run for it. I think they're going to get really exposed defensively. They can obviously score goals. They've got firepower up front these two guys right here plus a couple surrounding guys Zach Hyman Nuge Vander Kane when he's he's back to healthy now so the Oilers got to make a move on defense I think uh, Stuart Skinner has been pretty good in net for them this year Campbell's been picking it up lately but I wouldn't really rely on him I think Skinner's deserved the net See, I didn't even set. I don't know if you guys know this, but EA like change like the potentials change on guys sometimes. Like, I didn't. I set him to high elite, and it like goes to auto high franchise. I don't really know why. It's definitely something I'm gonna change because Kachuk's not a high franchise. Carter Verhage, too old to have potential. Even Colin White, I think I had a medium top nine. I hate how it auto does, and then you got to go in and change it yourself. I think I even had Ekblad like high elite. Josh Mahura been a pretty good pickup from waivers from Anaheim earlier this season. Casey Fitzgerald was uh, claimed off waivers not too long ago. Florida's got a little shortage of defensemen, I think. After giving up Uyghur, I think it's a way bigger loss than people think. And it's hurting them on the back end. Goalie tandem. I mean, they got potential to be good. They haven't been the greatest this year, though, Spencer Knight. And uh, Sergei Bobrovsky. Alex Lyon's been playing most of the games lately. Interesting in L.A., though. Phoenix Copley making a comeback. He played in the NHL a couple years ago. With Washington as a backup. How long ago? 18-19, he had a 9-0-4 in 27 games. So, I mean, he, Cal Peterson's been in the minors. I just kept him up here for his contract, so it just factors in. But LA's been pretty good. I mean, their goaltending's just not been good. And I think that's a huge thing with them. They've been playing well defensively. Um, they've got like a really deep lineup, to be honest with you. I think like their third line's like a super solid third line, like... I think I put them going to around the conference finals this season at the beginning. I don't think they played like a team right now that's going to go there, but I think they're talented enough. These young guys could take more steps. Like, look at this lineup. They're, they're super young. You brought in Fiala this year. You didn't have him last year. 
I think, especially if they get goaltending, maybe they'll go out and get a guy. You're taught this is a really good hockey team. They've been rumored to get uh, Carol Vigmelka from Arizona. Maybe they go out and pull a trigger on a trade for a guy like him. Quentin Byfield out of 79. Man, he's still got a lot to prove, but I wouldn't give up on him 20 years old. I still think uh, the sky's the limit for him. Minnesota Wild. Honestly, this I can't believe they're rumored to get rid of Dumba. It's quite surprising at this point when they're doing well, but they. I think they're going to try and make a hockey trade and try to get some more depth on forward and like allocate some like of that six million dollars to free up the cap room to get a forward because I think their their depth isn't that great. And they've always been a pretty good defensive team, and now a team, and now Kalen Addison's producing offensively for them. Dumba's not really producing offensively, so I mean they're probably looking at it like, well, he's making eight hundred thousand dollars, and Dumba's making six million, and we need some more goal scoring on this team. So I think it kind of it makes sense for them. On to the Montreal Canadiens. This team's like what a bottom six team in the league now at this point. Started off pretty decent, shocked some people, but they've kind of just came back down to normal at this point. Not too many really good ranked players on this team as got lots of veterans underachieving. Re recent news of Cole Caulfield missing the season uh, with sh rest of the season with shoulder surgery. But like Nick Suzuki's been pretty good. Doc's been really good. Monahan, he's been injured, but he's been good. But some of these guys just have not uh, met expectations for the Canadiens. Nashville Predators, I mean, this team's like just kind of mid-pack, and like I don't even think they're good enough to make the playoffs, and I don't think they're going to. They just they don't score enough. Um, they're not a bad defensive team, but I just don't think they're deep enough to make the playoffs and even if they did get in like they're not going to do much even like someone like Michael Granlin 84 he's he's been not good for them this year I think they expected a lot more from him but uh, their defense is still pretty strong they've been rumored to potentially move back home but he is 32 makes over 6 million bucks they got McDonough this offseason who hasn't been too great for them they've got a lot, a lot of defensemen back here Carrier, Fabro I know Fabro has been scratched at some points Mark Borowicki, but they've always been s helped by this guy, UC Saros, and even uh, Lankin, and when he's been playing, he's been a really solid goalie uh, for the Nashville Predators. On to the New Jersey Devils. Team shocked a lot of people this year, including me. I knew they had a good decor, as a, you can see how I've rated these guys. A couple guys have gotten upgrades recently, but um, they're a really good team, and Jack Hughes... If he got like not was a finalist for the heart, like I don't really know if I'd necessarily disagree with it. I don't know if he will, but he's been that good. And I mean, he's on pace for like over 50 goals, I think. And a lot of these guys, like they brought in Palat, who hasn't even played a lot, but like Jesper Bratt's a great player. And some of these guys here, depth down the lineup, who have been good for them and good enough to win a lot of hockey games. They went on that stretch. Nico Heischer's a super, very good player. Um, would probably be a 1C on a bunch of other teams. And uh, the Devils, they might do something with the deadline. They're rumored to get Timo Meyer. So I think they're, uh, I don't know if a threat come playoffs, but I think they're definitely on their way to making the playoffs for the first time in a couple seasons. This team lacks a lot of goal scoring, the New York Islanders. I don't really know what they're going to do at this point. They're, I think they're out of a playoff spot as I record this video. And I, but I don't know if they they risk it to get someone to go for it or they maybe sell some guys off. They've always been rumored to get like Tarasenko. They're a good defensive team, as you can see. I think Romanov as a number five is very good. He could probably play in the top four. But uh, they got good goaltending, good defense, and they're just they didn't make the playoffs last year. And I, there's no excuses really this year, but they haven't really been good enough. I thought they were going to be a they're. They thought they were going to be much better. Excuse me. On to the New York Rangers. This team's been 
really good as of lately. Okay, Andre Miller's been one reason for that. They got young guys like Braden Schneider as well. Adam Fox is awesome. Have him as a number two ranked defenseman in this game. Ben Harper, his contract extension is there as he signed that uh, as I record this video today. But he won't be, uh, the extension won't be in the update, so you're going to have to update that yourselves. If you would like his 2 times 7.75 deal added in. I think this is a pretty deep team. They could probably use another forward. They've been rumored for Timo Meyer too, which is pretty uh, pretty nuts to me, considering they've allocated a lot of money to forwards. they got to sign this guy, Philip Hedel. I've given him an extension. He might not even be worth more than that $3 million that I put for him. On to the Ottawa Senators. This is an underachieving team, for sure. Tim Stutzel. He's tied with uh, McTavish for the most... Uh, Increase in this last update. He went 85 to 88. I always knew he was a good player at 85, but he really just broke out last season. So I, it's like T.H. Thompson. You, I give him a chance. If he does it again, you get you get rewarded for it. So I thought 88 was worth it for Timmy. Josh Norris obviously sucks to hear he's shut down for the season. Uh, still going to leave him there in 86. Shane Pinto. I think the Sens were expecting a bit more for him considering the start he had this season, but... He hasn't been the best. He's still young, though. He's still got a long ways to grow. But this team, just for the most part, has been underachieving this season. Claude Giroud can't be happy with what's going on, and he's been really... I don't want to say public on the bench, but he's just... He's not hiding it at all from us. Like We can see that he's really struggling with this team. Like Obviously, coming from Philly... You probably expected a lot more seeing that. Oh, we brought they brought in Debrinkat if I bring myself in. Cam Talbot came in this year. Should be a really good team, but I think they need some help on defense. But I think they're just too far out to come back and make the playoffs this season. They may as well not I they they'll never like tank or publicly tank. But uh I think if they end up finishing lower, it's it ends up being better for them in the long run, but the players are never going to agree to that or they never even would talk about that some of these potentials are like off from what I've set them to like Konechny's a high top 6 Provorov's a low elite um but it, this game's just auto doing it which is pretty annoying but some guys it stays for what they actually are which is weird like I put Morgan Frost at a medium top 6 he stays there on to Pittsburgh man this team they're fighting for their playoff lives they haven't missed in a while. I, I think they're going to get in. They might do something at the deadline. I don't know what they can do, though. They're pretty tight to the cap. They've got a pretty good top six. I think that if they're able to get another top six forward, though, and you move Zucker down to the third line, I think they're in an even better spot. It just sucks that Latang's not playing like a number one D anymore, which really hurts them, in my opinion. Jari's been on and off injured. DeSmith's been so so lately. I wonder how it's gonna go for Pittsburgh. James Reimer there. I think that's one guy that's gonna get moved at the deadline. Two point two five million for the rest of this season as a rental goalie somewhere. Maybe even like LA, I don't know. He's he's won in the playoffs before, like not a Stanley Cup, but I mean with Carolina they got to the conference finals. I think Reimer's a pretty underrated goalie. He had a better season last season than this year, but he's a lot better than some some teams have goalies in the league. So I think he can really help some teams, especially that are in the playoffs and as a rental. You don't really got to commit to him. You can see how it goes. And I think it's worth it for uh, a bunch of teams in this league. On to the Seattle Kraken. I mean, this team's definitely surprised a lot of people leading their division right now. They don't really have any superstars, but they've got depth down their lineup, as you can see the way some of these guys are rated. Tolvanen was a great pickup off waivers. Can't believe a lot of teams that were worse than Seattle didn't uh, put in a claim for him. Pretty solid decor. Some guys have been good, including Vince Dunn. People are saying Tarasenko, they should have taken him, and I still... Maybe agree, but I mean, if Vince Dunn's playing this guy at this point, he's younger as well. Kind of understood the decision, but 
Could have went with Tarasenko too, and you can't really complain about it. St. Louis Blues, these guys are fighting for their playoff lives. They definitely, at this point, they want to make the playoffs. But they, they, in my opinion, they're just not good enough. And now, with like injuries with like O'Reilly, he's probably on his way out. I just don't think these guys are deep enough at this point. I, I think it's for their future. I think they should trade a couple guys, but they might try to go for it just because they're like they're right there. They're a couple points out. And when's the last time they didn't make the playoffs? Like they won the Stanley Cup a couple years ago. Like they don't they might internally not want to give up. On to the Tampa Bay Lightning team that's fighting for another Stanley Cup this year. Been to three straight cup finals. I'm sure they're going to get some at the deadline that comes out of nowhere, makes barely any money. They're rumored to get Luke Shen back. We'll see. They're pretty deep on forward, though. They lost Palat and McDonough. Sergich has been on another level this year, though, and Brandon Hagel's, like, honestly, been as good as what they probably hoped Palat could be. So I think they're still a really good team. Looks like they're going to play the Leafs in the first round. I think that'd be a good series. Can't really count out Toronto, though. I know they've lost a lot of games, or a lot of series in a row, but it doesn't really matter, to be honest, when you're going into a new series. So, But I'm sure these guys are going to get someone really good at the deadline and get some salary retention on them or whatever, and they're going to be going into the playoffs as an even better team than what we just looked at right now. And Toronto looks like a team that is going to be playing... Tampa in the first round. Been a really good team as of late. And getting to Connor Timmons has really helped them, especially getting some offense from the defense. Nylander, Marner. They're looking for a top six forward, I think, or some sort of forward. Kerfoot has not been what they had hoped. But uh, as for centers, I think they're pretty good. Matthews, Tavares, Camp. And uh, this Pontus Holmberg guy has been really good for them as well. On to the Vancouver Canucks. Boy, have they been uh, quite a mess recently. Bo Horvat there probably getting dealt. Uh, JT Miller's just been a disaster. Kuzmenko, his uh, extensions added here, was not added if you downloaded uh, the U4 rosters. Brock Besser has been rumored to get out. McKay have just signed there. Wonder what he's thinking. Same with Curtis Lazar, hometown boy though. Quinn Hughes, I wonder what he really wants to do at the end of the day. OEL, he must be happy that talk it's come in. But uh yeah, this team, they should just trade off their guys. I mean, Bedard would love to play there, but I don't know if they're gonna get him at this point. I don't know if they're that bad. On to Vegas now. This is a team that's probably competing for the Cup this year. White Cloud's out for a while. Mira Manov and Hutton have been taken over. I don't know if he's out at the entire playoffs or just the season. But this is a good hockey team. I don't really know what they're going to be able to do at the deadline. Maybe they'll risk giving their first because they think they're that good. But uh, they got Jack Eichel. That was their big trade recently and then giving up Max Pacioretty for free. I wonder what they got in the bag. Washington. This is a team I had not making the playoffs this year. They look like they might get in. They've been pretty good recently. And Ovi's still tearing it up. He's got, what, 80-something goals away at this point now from breaking Gretzky's record. Connor Brown. I know he's out a while. Not sure if he's coming back either. That'd be like almost like a deadline acquisition at this point. This team surprised me, though. Eric Gustafson's been awesome. They've got and they've had really good goaltending this year from Kemper and Lindgren. So, I mean, if Ovi can get in, like good luck for him to get another cup. I don't know if he's going to get one, but it would be uh, it'd be cool to see him get another one, and then it'd be more of the Crosby Ovi talk at that point. Winnipeg Jets this is definitely another team that surprised and su surprised me this year, and this is the last team obviously that we're going through. I don't really think they're that great, to be honest. Like They're not a threat to come to the playoffs for me, but they're getting the job done right now, second in their division, chasing for that number one spot, 
getting contributions from a lot of their uh, good forwards. And even this guy, Cole Perfetti, replacing some of the offense that uh, left this offseason. And then, like, Pierre-Luc Dubois is taking another step. Adam Lowry. Sam Gagne has been a really good signing at League Men. He's been producing a little bit in the bottom six for them. All right, guys. So we're done through going through the NHL rosters here. Let me know what you think. Let me know what changes you think I should make for the next update. Some of the potentials are off from what I made them. Uh, you can ask about a potential, and I'll ask, and I'll um, let you know if it's actually what I said it to or not. Because uh, some of them are way off there, especially like Kachuk at high franchise. Thank you very much for watching this video. Please like and.